Hello, Wealth Hackers. Welcome to another episode of the Truth About Real Estate Investing Show. My name is Rowan Cito, and I was inviting a bunch of new guests to come on the show. And uh, and how I explain what the show is about is that we are here to educate, inspire, entertain a bit. And I just recently added uh, to practice gratitude. Uh, I think, uh, well, in my experience and from some of the great books I've read, gratitude is one of the secrets to happiness. Uh, we actually practice it with our kids as well. We ask them uh, every night, usually oh, Cherry, my wife asks the kids every night uh, to name at least one, two, three things that they're grateful for uh, that happened that day. Uh, the best part of practicing gratitude is it's totally free. Uh, for And for fans of this show, all 17 or 18 of you, you'll have noticed a trend where I've asked uh, guests about challenges they or their family have faced along the way, uh, including today's guest, Kevin. Kevin's grandparents suffered through the uh, Vietnam War when the U.S. invaded their country. Uh, quick side note, the, the Vietnam War and the... Uh, it, it, it awfully par- it parallels... It's kind of scary, the comparisons of the Vietnam War versus the the today's Afghanistan and the U.S. pulling out of the, uh, with, uh, pulling out of Afghanistan, but uh, that's not for today's show. <laughs> that's not for this show, period. <laughs> Anyways, immigrants keep coming to this country as we welcome people with open arms here, and there are uh, many parts of the world with less opportunity and freedoms than here in the greatest country in the world. I saw uh, in a news article this week that we uh, Canada is on track to likely exceed the number of immigrants coming to Canada, uh, which which numbers, which is expected to be uh, over 400,000. We're expecting 400,000 new Canadians, and the plan, I believe, is to have at least two more years of that. So there, are, uh, yeah, there's no end to the people who want to get into this great country. I do try to highlight uh, this fact. Um, I do like to try I'll highlight how um, the challenges that our guests have um, when I'm interviewing them. So to help you, the listener, understand why immigrants continue to disrupt their daily lives, drop what they're doing, and move to a freezing cold country like our own. <laughs> at least at least the Toronto area is not the most freezing part of Canada. Anyways, it's not just immigrants coming to the Golden Horseshoe of Ontario either. Uh, and I interviewed Kayla Andrade for the podcast just last week. And before moving to Cambridge, Ontario, her family lived and worked in the fishing industry of Newfoundland, Canada. Now... Quick question for you, where are the best job opportunities in Canada? I'm going to pause to let you think about it. My answer would be the greater GTHA, greater Toronto, the greater, greater Toronto Hamilton area, which would be, you know, Golden Horseshoe of Ontario. Number two would be, you know, Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge or Ottawa, Ontario. Number three would be Vancouver and area. And then what? Already, in my opinion, there's a massive drop between number one to number two, right? That drop is steep. And then the drop, uh, and so number three, my opinion, is the Vancouver area. It has expensive real estate. Now, question is, what's number four? In my opinion, there's a huge drop off between Vancouver and whatever number four is, right? Southwestern Ontario is a pretty diversified economy. And where do you find another well diversified economy in Canada. Just look what happened to our investor friends in Alberta who bet heavy on the oil industry while the rest of us in BC and Ontario have profited heavily, right? Where am I going with this? The next question is, where do you think the immigrants want to settle, right? That decision should drive, that, whatever your answer is, that should help drive your decision on where to invest. Then figure out what, a ca- what your cash flow requirement is uh, and this is why I personally prefer to invest within an hour to 90 minutes drive from Toronto. Uh, I think it's no secret on the show. Uh, I invest in primarily Hamilton and I have some properties in St. Catharines, Ontario as well. Uh, so that uh, I can benefit from the price appreciation, be, from benefiting from being close to Toronto, and I can get some cash flow as well by being just a bit further from Toronto. Uh, and I like this strategy. Uh, again, because I'm getting a mix of both cash flow and appreciation, and I am uh, able to stay near a diversified economy, and I'm able to mitigate my risk by having close proximity to the economic epicenter of our country, which is Toronto. That's just my preference, and in my experience, it's worked out incredibly well for my clients and I. My friends in Hambundans (laughs) have experienced much of the same. Uh, 
What is Hambundance? It's a small networking group made up of real estate investors that I co-founded. Uh, and the name is a playoff of uh, GoBundance, which is a high-end networking group that organizes kick-ass trips like whitewater rafting and camping in the Grand Canyon or group trip trips to exotic, exotic locations like Thailand. Right. The initiation fee at the time was five thousand dollars, I think. I'm pretty sure it's gone up since then. Uh, but like many real estate investors, we are frugal people preferring to save and invest uh, versus spend so lavishly. So I grabbed a couple of my investor buddies and we started our own group with no fees, very casual. We would start the <laughs> we would start planning our events. Uh, so we're not going to Grand Canyon. We're not going to the Grand Canyon to, to um, you know, with like fancy tents and stuff like that. Uh, we start screening what events we're going to do, what activities we're going to do by surfing Groupon. <laughs> we, we, like, we like stuff to be on sale. Our, our last big event was, uh, was a trip to Vegas, which included a $300 flight. It was crazy cheap because it was just after New Year's. Uh, so it's early January. Like nobody was on the, pl on the plane. This is pre-pandemic, by the way, pre-pandemic. We stayed in New York, New York for $100, $110 per room per night. It was so cheap that... You know, we actually, some of us actually decided to have our own room. We purchased uh, passes to gun shooting, to zombie shooting, to Ferrari driving, all this off, off, off of Groupon. This was, again, this was all pre-pandemic. Uh, now with restrictions easing, thanks to vaccines working, over 80% of adults being fully vaccinated on, in Ontario, which is the vast majority, but only, uh, but only making up a po minority of the positive test cases in Ontario. Uh, and even uh, even a very, very small number of uh, those hospitalized and even uh, a smaller percentage of those that are in intensive care. The number ranges between zero to two of, uh, of fully vaccinated folks within in the ICUs. So, you know, based on the data, the vaccine is working. Now with gov universities and government mandating vaccinations among students and staff, uh, the COVID problem will continue to decline, in my opinion assuming that no crazy variants make appear make 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 appearances but I, I but i digress this past saturday we had a guys day again with my hand abundance group a group of friends that are all real estate investors pretty high-end real estate investors we started at 9 a.m i picked up my buddies uh we road tripped to a gun club uh silverdale uh which is in the niagara region to shoot trap which is using shotguns to shoot flying clay discs we had a guide, a professional, you know, a veteran of the, of the club. You know, he's been shooting for over 20 years. So he taught us how to be safe and, actually, and how to shoot, hopefully hit something. <laughs> so we each took a turn uh, shooting. We were, all keeping, we were all keeping our own score. And we each threw in 20 bucks into a pot for the winner to take all. Uh, some words of encouragement were shared amongst each other. You know, hey, good job, like uh, good luck. Uh, but there was way more trash talk. Much of that I cannot repeat here. <laughs> I didn't win, but I was pretty happy with my with my improvement uh, in my performance over, over the over the two rounds. In the first round, I shot nine of twenty five successfully. So I I, I hit. Uh, 25 cl um, t clay discs were launched. I hit nine of them with the shotgun. That uh, was round one. In round two, I did much better, uh, getting 16 of 25. Uh, yeah, so, and that was good enough for uh, overall second place on the day. So I was pretty happy with that, though I didn't min win any money. From there, my friend Roger, who was with us, he hosted us on his new, brand new powerboat that I just bought this summer, paid for, bought for by a recent sale of an investment property. So he sold the property. He's not paying for a, a depreciating asset out of pocket, out of his savings. No, he, he, he's letting his investment pay for it. We each took a turn being towed behind the powerboat at high speeds and at sharp terms, short term turns on an inflatable tube, falling into the water, of course, which of course hurts. Hence, we only had one turn each. <laughs> From there, we had dinner and drinks in Niagara Falls, and that's where the story ends. Let's just leave it at that. The next day, in other news other than waking up with a hangover, the federal government, uh, the Trudeau government, announced an election uh, is coming this September 20th. So that means we are voting on September 20th. So far, I've only looked at one party's platform. I will look at them all uh, on what their plans are to improve the housing situation, uh, which is a top two election issue this time around. And one party wants to encourage Canadians to invest in rental housing by allowing us to defer capital gains when we sell a rental property and reinvesting into another rental property. 
This already exists in the U.S. It's called the, for those who've been around for a while, real estate investors, especially if any of you Americans listening, I don't think there are any of you, it's called the Section uh, 1031 Exchange. Uh, so again, you can, if, you, if you own an investment property, you can sell it, and as long as you buy another investment property, typically you buy something bigger, then you do not have to pay capital gains on the original sale of, of the investment property, right? This is what one party is proposing. I immediately shared this news with uh, my hand buttons group and my in our um, in our chat group, and one person immediately replied saying, "I would sell all my single family rentals uh, and invest in houses I can duplex." Right? What a novel idea! And sent everyday Canadians to invest in their own their own money into cr- to create more rental supply to alleviate rental prices. Again, we don't need any money from the government. People are ready ready and willing to do this themselves. Cherry is all over researching real estate tax implications from all the major parties uh, from their platforms, and I'll keep keep you all posted here as well. So, you know, I wasn't excited for a new election, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see some of the things coming out of the parties for for trying to solve our housing crisis. So, onto this week's show. Onto this week's show, we have a special guest in Kevin Huin of Empire Mortgages. He's special as he's my friend and one of my trusted mortgage brokers uh, to f- and I trust him to find me inexpensive mortgages so I may continue to invest in real estate. Two weeks ago, we closed with a mortgage brokered by Kevin and his team and we have another duplex expected to close in about a month from now, requiring Kevin's magic. <laughs> if you know Kevin, he's one of those guys who gives 110% in everything he does. Uh, he runs marathons, he competes in CrossFit, you see what I mean? Like he doesn't just stroll through any everything, anything. He just goes hard. He's an 11 year veteran of mortgage brokering and it's not just A and B lenders, which is uh, well, most, most mortgage people do that. Uh, he does a ton of uh, what he calls C lending, which is private mortgages. And on top of that, they do construction mortgages and they're working on some partnership stuff as well. Kevin also completed Stock Hacker Academy and is achieving great returns. If you too want to be a stock hacker, I'm giving uh, a few more demos before we deliver the next course starting October 1st. Uh, And you can find details at www.stockhackeracademy.ca. Now, you don't want to delay because we have a sale that ends this Monday, August 31st. And it won't be that you won't see a price that cheap again. All right. Again, that's www.stockhackeracademy.ca. Uh, Kevin's also here today to share how he almost didn't exist, but thanks to sacrifices by his family, he's risen from the bottom and now he's here. He drives a Tesla, he golfs at one of the top clubs, golf clubs in Canada. He's very successful. Uh, To follow Kevin, you can find him at www.khmortgageteam.com. And he's one of those crazy people that left his email address, kevin at empiremortgages.com. Please enjoy the show. Kevin. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Excellent. Uh, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on the show. Good, obviously. Thank you for having me, man. I know you have some tight di- timelines. <laughs> yeah. the, phone, the phone is on. Uh, it's on call over there. Yeah. 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 Normally, normally guests turn off their phones, but you you have extenuating circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Baby number two. Uh, any minute now. So. Are we past the due date? No, next week. So oh, next week's so, due yeah, date. Yeah, yeah. So next oh, week, okay, but okay. Uh, but, we but no, but uh, our doctor kind of gave us a bit of a warning. Mm-hmm. Just, just be ready. Mm-hmm. So, do you know the sex? Uh, female, girl. So, two girls. Oh, we'd be awesome sisters. Uh, two years apart. It's gonna be fun, man. Yeah. Not looking forward to dealing with a teenage girl. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure if I, if I want to be like the dad with like you know the shotgun at the front door when she brings a boy home or not. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be very protective. Yeah, you're pretty jacked. So that'll probably be enough. You don't, need, you don't need weapons. Yeah, no, no. These, <laughs> yeah, I don't these need things, weapons. These, these things fire itself, yeah. Because <laughs> we actually met at CrossFit. You're correct, yes, yes, and yes. And we didn't yes. know, I don't think, like, we just met as, like, you know, as both gym members. Correct, Not yeah. uh, knowing each other's industry or nothing. Yeah. That's the beauty of being in the gym, everyone. Like, everyone's in shorts and t-shirt. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm, I worked out with one gentleman, I uh, found out four months in, that he was the head of, like, you know what I mean, like, medicine at McMaster. <laughs> and I didn't even know that. Like I was, he was just another guy to me, and yeah. I, and, and like I think that's what's beauty. The beauty thing about fitness is yeah. that everyone just it, it, they're the true form, the true self, right? Yeah, yeah. So, 
And uh, yeah, we met CrossFit. Erwin had his uh, his like um, <laughs> heavy duty red lifting belt, throwing up four or five hundred. Um, Alchemy CrossFit, shout out to those guys, right? So, yeah, yeah. but uh, but no, like um, that community was was su- was super powerful. Yeah. And um, and yeah, st- still good friends with those guys until this day, actually. So. Yeah. I love that gym. It's just I had to leave. I moved oh yeah, away. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Love that gym. Which is funny because you're Mr. Hamilton, right? You know, the, like actually a, f- a funny story. I don't think I've ever told you this. Oh boy. Um, I ran into a city hall personnel, Hamilton <laughs> City Hall personnel, not too long ago, and they're like, hey, I'm like, hey, how's it going? I'm not gonna mention, mention any names. Like, you're Mr. Hamilton, right? <laughs> I can I can take this two ways here. <laughs> you said yes, right? Yes. How can I help? <laughs> Right? What else am I gonna do, right? <laughs> now that you live in Oakville, I thought I would buy Mr. Oakville and yeah, just yeah. plastering all over Hamilton, yeah, right? Yeah. But uh, but no, but it's you know the, 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 like that just goes to show how strong your brand is, though, man. You do have a powerful brand. So I love funny. it. Like 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 you went to school for what, luxury marketing, and like you know you, 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 you whatever you do, you you, you do it one hundred ten percent, and like you created this like this character. Mm-hmm. That's like, you know what I mean? It's easy to remember, yeah. relatable. You know what I mean? You rock the tie cast jersey. I love it, man. Like, and, and it just goes to, to show like how much effort you put in these things. And, uh, and, and, and when, when that happens, mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, you win. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's a funny story. I wanted to share that with you. It, it, uh, I always just try to get that extra 10%. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, and in certain, like, the, like the weightlifting belt, for example, that's an expensive one. Uh, that, that you remember me wearing but again like i like the joke i say is i do have more money than i have talent right, <laughs> so right, i'm right. best in the equipment right and i'll i'll try to outwork people yeah right like nobody knew who i was mm-hmm. so and my name is hard to spell and say mm-hmm. hence mr hamilton mm-hmm. very easy to remember amazing like no one knows what i look like like yeah. you can tell nobody knows what i look yeah, like yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah. if i was if, if i was wearing the hamilton tiger hat jersey yeah, and we're yeah. standing next to each other oh, yeah. they'd know who was who 100 percent. right yeah, absolutely if you were wearing the mr hamilton if you were wearing the tiger hat jersey yeah. they would have just said Early. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But no, and and and, like, and like that's the reason uh, we launched Empire Mortgage Group, right, Erwin? So, so like you know, I've been broke for over eleven years now, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it was always the Kevin Huynh Mortgage Team. Mm-hmm. You know, H U I N H. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, like I'm, I I've heard a call a thousand different ways. So, um, so for me, like I need something memorable, something easy to remember, and that's where Empire just came in, right? So, oh, so you named it. I named the Empire, right? Oh, okay. And like just that, you know what I mean? Like it's such a strong word yeah, yeah. for um, you know, for the uh, for for our Asian culture too, right? So so for me, like I want to help you build an empire. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I want to help you build an empire of wealth, like right. through real estate, mm-hmm. and use mortgages as a vehicle to get you there, right? right so right. Um, so I think like that's more memorable, mm-hmm. um, and and it's just easier for you know like recruitment, marketing, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah, and you you have nice swag too. I'm surprised you're not wearing you're not wearing it. You no, know, I'm shirt. not. No, I'm not. You know, it's uh they're on the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, but but now uh, you did deck me out with some Iwin and Stock Hacker kind of respect, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank uh yeah, thanks for coming in. Um so Empire so you do guys do a lot of things, uh like in the mortgage space. Yeah. And yeah. just to clarify, you're a mortgage broker. Were you sure. do you have to be an agent first? For two years, yeah, you okay. have to be an agent for two years, yeah, yeah. and um, and then you take a, a course to become a broker, and then that's when you can um, be called a broker or start your own brokerage. And that's what you did. You started your own brokerage. Correct. Yeah. So. Oh, you love admin work, eh? So like we're, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's that's funny you said that because you, I did not realize how much admin work is involved, right? Um, but no, like we're fully independent, right? So it, uh, the amazing thing about that is that just access to lenders, um, for us, like giving all of our friends, family, clients, partners, just ample options when it comes to financing. Mm-hmm. Right, so we have Empire Mortgage Group. We have, you know, I mean, our Empire um, private mortgage lending arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to do a construction arm eventually. We want to do a partnership arm. Um, it's just like for for us, it's just to be versatile and kind of pivot um, and, and and kind of adapt to what people want. Right, so right. like you know, I mean, we're at the end of the day, we're just glorified educators. Like I mean, like just we want to educate. We want we want to teach people how to right. how to how to make money. Right, right. So yeah, it's not the term I would have used, but yeah. What did you use? I don't know. It's more like like just just look at the list that you named, right? You want you want a full suite of lenders available, 
right? You do private lending. So also uh, conversely, private borrowing, mm -hmm. right? So it's both sides. You want to do, you want to do construction. Like, and you want to do partnerships, like especially the last two. Well, actually, even the, the bottom three, private construction partnership, a lot don't do. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right? That's the majority right. don't do, and then no bank does it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I guess I'm, I'm always comparing myself to like to the best, right? And just yeah. trying to be like I'm, I'm never satisfied. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, I know, like growing up East End Hamilton, kind of a chip on my shoulder uh, of always like wanting more, and um, and yeah, like and yeah, my my wife, like God bless her, she's she's an amazing woman. Um, she she like she always says, Kev, just take a step back and kind of see where where you were and, and where and, and where you're now, where you're at now, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, like it, like for, like for me, it's just like oh cool, like I I'm very I feel very grateful to be able to to be here today, mm -hmm. for example. We'll, we'll but, get to that. Uh, we'll but, get to that. But uh, I'm hungry, man. Hungry. Uh, so two questions coming out of that. Uh, what's the intersection, East Hamilton? Uh, where I grew up at? Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, it'd be Barton and Kenworth. Oh. Yeah. Northeast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't walk, to, you, you don't walk around there at night, man. Especially, <laughs> like, 30 years ago. Well, well, not like a guy like you. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you're done. <laughs> you're done for sure down there. <laughs> and like you said, that you're hungry. Like, you, um, okay, so... You're you're humble, I know, and you 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 undersell yourself, but you're one of the top guys in the gym. <laughs> yeah, like hungry because it's past lunchtime, but uh, no, but no. No, but you uh, do you do like the stupid work, like the crazy yeah, workouts. You, you're part of, like the elite, like the competitive group. Yeah, you know what, man? Like like I was, like, I got beat up in that gym, man. Like uh, kudos to those athletes at, at the gym, like. Um, a couple of those guys, especially the coaches, are just phenomenal yeah. athletes. For me, it's just like how can I push my body to the limit, right? It's the same reason why I, I got into ultra marathon running and stuff like that, right? You know how what I mean? How far is like, an ultra marathon? Like anything, anything above forty-two k, but uh, but like my longest one was fifty-five k. Oh, uh, you mean? And then like okay, so it's not hard enough here. Let's go into the Arizona desert at like you know you nine thousand feet of elevation and see how my lungs are. Horrible, horrible experience. But like, it, it, it and you go, finished it? Yeah, I finished it. I asked my wife how I was afterwards. It, it, it wasn't pretty, but uh, but it's just like how far can I push my body and my mind? And and out there, it's like your body wa wants to. My body wanted to give up 12k in, and it's just like how can you tell yourself just keep going? It's like it's it's so much mental, man. It, it is like anything in life, though. It's yeah. it's so much mental, right? So. But no, like I love it, man. Was it hot it. too? Oh, it's like forty degrees Celsius. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, I thought I was in good shape. I went there, twelve k in. I started cramping up. I, I couldn't breathe. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, ah, elevation. Very interesting. Yeah. We're at sea Plus level air. here. Yeah. We're at sea level here. Train, I'm, I'm training sea level um, with fairly flat grounds here. Yeah. Gave me a couple of hills, but you can only do so many hill repeats here, right? But uh, but no, man. It's uh, it's cool. Love to do a hundred miler one day. 100 miles, 160K would be kind of cool. You're on your own, bro. I'll follow your Instagram. Come by. Come by, have a beer with me afterwards. We're, we're, nah. <laughs> There's just so much to cover. Um, so can you, sorry, can you, um, what, is there like a typical private land borrow deal that you do? Yeah. Like, is like 60 yeah. or, what are, the, what are like 60% or 80% of the deals? Yeah, no, great question. Like on the private side, uh, in particular, we do a lot of flips. We, we, we oh, do a lot okay. of flips. Uh, like, for, like for me, when, when you're flipping on property, you yeah. want to get in there as easy as, as possible. You want to get out as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you just want to get the financing, right? Mm -hmm. The average closing day for our flips is two weeks, two and a half weeks, right? So, oh, so it's fast. You have to be quick though, right? Like to take advantage of the opportunities, like you got to be quick, right? With the banks, like their turnaround time could be, you know, <laughs> Trying to get an appraisal time. in two weeks. <laughs> right, exactly, right? So, so it's, it's just that, okay, I have to close this thing. Um, to me, like, there's a stigma around private financing where, oh, it's expensive, it's a you know, yeah. loan shark, but, but it's not. <laughs> it, if, if you do the math and, like, it still makes sense uh, on the other side of it, uh -huh. then do it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And I, I was talking to Cherry earlier. Um, a lot, too, way too many people try to hit home runs. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you got to play some Billy Bean baseball where, like, hit a bunch of base hits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's wrong with making 30K in three months, yeah, four months? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Three months, 30K, you're still making six figures. Yeah. But, 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 people, but, but a lot of people are like, if I don't make six figures, it's not worth my time. Why? 
why you know it's about velocity man yeah. i love the word velocity in business and investing it's like the, the more deals you do the more you can turn around capital and invest in the next one mm -hmm. the further along you're going to be yeah. instead of just sitting there waiting 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 try to hit that home run right yeah. so 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 like yeah. yeah like you know a lot of my friends say hey kev i wish i got into the market five years ago right yeah. they'll still be saying the same thing five years from now yeah. you know that yeah. you have no, friends totally all the time you have yeah. family like that yeah Right, but like you're trying to educate them and tell them, hey, guys, this is math. This is how you do it. Yeah. Do they listen? Some do, but some are like just content yeah. with uh, with how they are, and, and which is fine with me. Right, my goal is just to create options and just uh, just give them every opportunity to succeed, and then it's up to them. Right, like, right. I can't. You know what I mean, I could bring the horse down to the water, mm -hmm. but I can't make them drink it. Right, so. Uh, what would the terms look like, look like on a flip deal yeah, in terms yeah. of the borrow or the lend? Yeah. And also, let's actually talk about the borrow side as sure. well. Sorry, the lend side. Sure. Because you, how is it? You have an investor who already has money in your account or something yeah, like that, yeah. ready to go, like waiting to be deployed? Yeah, so so we do work with investors. Yeah. Um, um, like, so these are uh, people that are lending? Correct, yeah. yeah. So so we do, we, we, we do work with investors where we sit down and we lay out uh, what's your risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. What are you happy with? What are you looking for? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like what timeline wise, right? But we work with a lot of mix, like mortgage investment corporations, a mm -hmm. lot of trust companies. Also um, big, larger funds. Yeah, and, but then we also have our own fund. Ah. Uh, like, well, like not our own fund in particular, but like we have funds that I lend out personally. Right, right, right. right? So, so, so we do a lot of that too. Uh -huh. And uh, and yeah, so, and, and, and when it comes to terms, we have six months, one year open term, so there's no breakage fee when you break. Right, right. You know what I mean? Rates anywhere from, you know, like six, five, six percent to like eight, nine percent, something right, like right. that, right? So so to me, like I'm like, if the number makes sense, if you can make fifty grand and it costs you five grand, like so you make forty five thousand, does that make sense to you? Or yes it does. Or are you gonna sit there and be like, Oh man, it costs me five grand, I'm not gonna do it. Right? So it's just kind of like it's it's math and, and if if you will take that risk and like the most successful successful flippers I know, primarily 95 percent of them uh, of their portfolio is through private financing. Mm -hmm. It's just quick, yeah. in and out, right? So yeah, so you want to flip, look at private financing right. for sure. Because straight up, like typically the the house does not look great, right. and no one can get a schedule like Correct. like uh, an A lender, so they have to go a different route, and then all these people talk about JVs because. I think part of why people think of partnerships is because a lot of people are just selling partnership education, Correct. joint venture education. Yeah, yeah. So that they think they, they think that that's the first option because mm -hmm. they don't have to pay an expense, mm -hmm. but you give them half the deal, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you give them half the upside, yeah. which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, right? Especially when it's your first one. Yeah. Uh, you want to partner up with uh, you know someone who knows yeah. um, how to flip, yeah. uh, can walk you through it, you can learn a lot from it. Yeah, yeah. But the other day, yeah, like it, it's yeah, like you're right. A lot of a lot of properties that are ideal for flipping is undervalued mm -hmm. distressed properties yeah, yeah. and a lot of banks don't like to lend on distressed mm -hmm. properties right mm -hmm. some some well, none of them do right yeah yeah so <laughs> so for me some of my best projects are are properties where they're half renovated mm -hmm. and the owner and the owner runs out of money mm -hmm. i go in there you know what i mean i finish the renovation um and um i i, I get the owner I, out of his or her hole, mm -hmm. which is like also doing them a favor, yeah. right? And then uh, and then those are the, some of the best deals that I've seen, right? right. So right. absolutely, because you do the flips yourself, you do you you real estate, you you lend, you invest, you yeah, buy, you yeah, hold. yeah. So, so so I I work with a team of contractors, or I JV out to a contractor mm -hmm. to do the flips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like to me, I'm the, I'm the capital finance administration partner mm -hmm. um, and then I'll, I'll partner up with a with a hands-on right, right. contractor partner yeah so you're, you're perfect you're, marriage so you do it all yourself like yeah. you you basically are your client as well correct right? absolutely yeah yeah for it's sure. kind of easier then when you're the client well like, I'd rather lose my money than someone else's uh -huh. Uh -huh. right it's easier okay good yeah, like I'll throw you five bucks at the end of this. Yeah, I won't lose it. <laughs> uh, so one of my questions would be then, what if I have like a hundred grand in RSPs? Can yeah. I can I put it in your fund type thing? Absolutely. Yeah, like if you're an accredited investor, for sure, oh, okay. you, you can definitely do that. Uh, the, so I get asked if I can lend out people's money all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Is that oh, more than people asking to borrow? Uh, no, no, no. It's pretty even? No, it's not. It's, it, it, it's, it's very heavy towards borrowing. 
but uh, more more requests to borrow than yeah that. yeah okay, because okay. because like my network's a lot of investors right okay. so um, but I, I do get asked a lot hey can you invest my money the issue with it now is that the expectation is not is no longer there right mm -hmm. so four or five years ago um, you can be like eight into eight percent with two percent fee mm -hmm. and like that's very competitive right mm -hmm. what we're seeing is that these large trust companies these large mix they're starting to do privates at you know four nine five five nine five six nine five right really? like, like seven eight percent all in so to, so to me it's that like how like you mean like how am i going to sell this to my client and like because i'm looking out for their best interests yeah. right literally like so uh and and sell them something that's higher interest rate when i can just go to a mic and get cheaper money right so i think that's where the kind of disconnect is recently with uh with like people asking me to lend their money out right so it's an yeah. interesting world yeah you know what like and, and then because of these big mix and trust companies when you have money if it sits stale in the bank account it's a horrible thing yeah. you have to get rid of it right so yeah so so you know, I mean they have like tens of millions of dollars that they need to get rid of right. um and like you know, I mean they they'll, they'll take us a, a less a smaller margin right. um and just to get the money out right again velocity right so right. so it does seem like there's a bit of a trend that there's more money to be deployed than there is yeah, there opportunity is. Mm -hmm. yes, that seems to be consistent so. almost everywhere in yeah every every opportunity that we probably all looked at really well, like, look, ask any apartment building investor, mm -hmm. <laughs> ask any land developer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it more people chasing the deal than yeah, not? Fair. Yeah, yeah, very fair. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Everyone wants to make money in real estate, right? So everyone wants to make money in general. That's true. Right. That's true. That's true. Unless your life's at, at risk, which leads us to another question. <laughs> which leads us another down another avenue. Oh, actually, no. Before we move on, yeah. uh, can can you what is so you sorry you said about the typical like a vanilla term. I guess every every deal is different. Sure, but like eight percent and a two percent lender fee was like the norm. Yeah, like you mean like if, if if you run the numbers and you run at eight and two, yeah, um, the like twenty percent down. The beauty the beauty spot is twenty five percent down. If you can get the twenty five percent down, yeah. it's such that there's you open yourself up to so many more private lenders with better rates and terms mm -hmm. at 25% down. Yeah, yeah. If that 5% is going to cut into your construction costs, then sure, go with 20% down. But just budget 8 and 2 and just see what that looks like on the other side of the right. flip. And if that makes sense, then just pull the trigger. Just do it. Right. And then how long are people typically holding on needing that money? Yeah, so we typically register a one-year a one year term right so like a flip like if you're flipping on property you should like you, you should look to to list at spring and fall market right you don't want to list in the middle of winter when mm -hmm. your property doesn't mm -hmm. show well mm -hmm. so you just kind of gauge on on like that timeline right. and uh and you should be doing a flip less than one year or else you're uh you're not doing you're doing something wrong there all right I'm glad I did something right then because I yeah. bought two houses in the summer. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Both good buys, by the way. Thank yeah, you. Good buys. Thank you. Had a good team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, I don't, uh, should we talk about Schedule A lending at all? Do we need to spend some time on it? Like, what What are, yeah, you know what? What yeah. are you seeing in the market? Yeah, like, like Schedule A lending uh, rates, are, rates are still super low. Yeah. Right. Free. So, yeah, so like if you don't own property, just get into the market. It, it is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, house hack if you have to, meaning yeah. buy a two-unit property, mm -hmm. rent one out, help make that tenant pay some of your mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. um, just just get in the market. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, like I was telling Terry earlier, like we're seeing variable rates as, as low as 0.99%. That's unbelievable. Free. Unbelievable, yeah. right? So um, if you have equity in your property, refinance for, for, for the low interest rates today uh, to buy more properties, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then, uh, and then work with a team of experts, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. uh, y y your team is very investor savvy. Oh, you guys, you guys have formulas for days on your team there. So um, if you want to find a deal, your team is going to find a deal, right? So and then, why do you think I got my properties? And then, <laughs> and, and then we'll finance it, right? So but just, but just get in the market, just yeah. get your feet wet, right? And like, just ask questions, mm -hmm. align yourself with professionals, you know, accountant, realtor, mortgage, insurance, mm -hmm. lawyer, and just ask as many questions as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and like, try it. If you don't like it, sell it. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. the other day, like, you know what I mean? So, so to me, like- yeah, turn it over. Yeah, exactly. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, interest rates are so low, it's it just like, definitely take advantage of yeah. it, right? So. Get a variable mortgage, so it's a small break fee. <laughs> yeah, th three months interest. Um, and yeah, like to me, like you, you can convert it into a fix anytime. It's just, yeah. a, it's just a dynamic uh, product 
to give you ample flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I can't stress that enough, right? So. I was just having lunch with a client. You, you saw him for the first time in person. You saw him after when we yeah, came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I told, we were talking about, you know, I told him how I bought two houses. And then his next question was, um, like, don't you think it's too, think, think things are too crazy? It's too expensive? Mm-hmm. And I said to him, what else are you going to do? Like, here, here's the question then. You have a million dollars cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't own a home. Mm-hmm. You don't live with your parents. You can't live with your parents. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? He said, well, how to house, how to house, how to house hack. So what am I doing any different? Right. I do have a place to live. Yeah. And I have money to cash to deploy. Yeah. What are you going to do? Right. And he right. his answer still is still buy house, buy real estate. Right. So right. So you just said your, you just said the answer right there. Right. Right. Like what else are you going to do? Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, for sure. Like what else? You, would you do invest in anything else? Yeah, you know, like definitely invest in real estate or, you know I mean, lend privately. Yeah. Uh, but well, I, I, I only say that is because I know that industry so well, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? Like um, to me, like it's my investment for portfolio where I want it to be, no. But but because I use a lot of that capital for private lending, mm-hmm. right? So which which I, I feel like it's a, it's a nice compliment, mm-hmm. right? So but no, like, yeah, absolutely. Like what are you can do like let it sit in a savings account mm-hmm. and just yeah. gain zero. Would point you ever allow? In, so. Would you ever allow a million dollars of cash in your one of your accounts? Yeah, yeah. So right. would you just let it sit there? Yeah, like you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's all it's all dependent on risk tolerance. You know what I mean? And like if it was like my grandma, mm-hmm. I'd probably just tell her to tuck it away and just live off of the interest or whatever yeah. it is right but like we're Everyone's all young different right? we're all young right so you know definitely invest in real estate right well, my client's 26 27 know. years old yeah so how, wow, how would you ever how would that ever make sense to sit on it no it doesn't it doesn't yeah right absolutely not right yeah like the opportunity cost like i yeah. could be making money with this money yeah to me i'm losing money mm-hmm. it's gotta go mm-hmm. <laughs> cash is trash yeah all right, I don't know where to go next. What's your like? I, I guess like so. You bought two properties, right, <laughs> yeah. in the summer. Like, what's your game plan with those properties then? I just have, hold on to them. Yeah, amazing. Hopefully, I'll garden sweep them. That's amazing. I can't yeah. wait until the day uh, I had because um, you know in Toronto I had the gentleman who do who do laneway housing in Toronto because yeah. you can build a laneway house by right right in Toronto, right? And they're hoping within a year you can do a garden sweep by right right. So and for the listeners' benefit, by right meaning like you still have to get permits and do everything, do it by code. But you don't have to ask anyone if you can do it. Right. Like you don't have to put up signs letting the neighbors know. Yeah. The neighbors usually won't know whether it's happening until shovel to the ground. Right. Right. And I and that's what I'm looking for in in other municipalities because yes. then we'll create more housing supply. We'll alleviate a lot of these issues that we have with housing supply. Amazing. Right. We'll have more tenant. We'll have more houses. Uh, we'll have more tenant housing. Right. But that won't cost a cent to the government. Right. 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 <laughs> right. How's this not a win-win? Yes, right. I know it'll piss off some neighbors. Right. Right, uh, but what's the bigger problem? Being mad about housing being more dense, or people having a place to live, right. especially something affordable. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. Wait, but, and, and, like, and, and on the lending side, like we like we can't wait oh, until. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you know anything about the lending side? On like, garden, like garden so, streets? it's yeah, like it, it, it's it's still pretty far fetched out there right now. Um, yeah. uh, like you know, what I mean, like I, I'll, I'll be interested to, uh, to 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 see even like being from Hamilton when we can do it in Hamilton, for example, yeah. right? But it all starts in Toronto. And then and then lending is gonna be, I think a couple of years out yeah, yeah. before they realize like, okay, that's a unit. Yeah, if yeah. you can if you can finance a, a basement suite, right? Or something like, or like, you know what I mean? Like, so why can't you finance a garden suite or a laneway house, right? So it's um, in time, right? In time, um, yeah. uh, like, Just like basement apartments, so it took time. Exactly, like, like you mean, our industry is, is slow to adapt. But uh, you know they're just crossing their T's and, d- and dotting their eyes. But yeah. I'll be very excited once uh, once lending opens up for those types of properties mm-hmm. for sure. Because mm-hmm. it'd be great to get construction loan for it. We'll talk about that. Amazing, yeah, it'd be yeah. amazing, amazing. Because the more more investors would be willing to do it yes. if they could finance the construction costs rather than have to come out of pocket and then refinance after yeah. you know, and yeah. so and just pull their capital out and yeah. just do it again, right? So because yeah. there could be the risk of refi. Yes. Like you may not get the appraisal. Right. The appraisal may not be, may, be, may understate the value of the of the laneway house or the garden suite. Correct. Right. Yeah. So that's a risk. So getting yeah. a construction loan would be much more appetizing. Yeah. For most. Absolutely. absolutely. And then we'll have more housing, and it doesn't cost the government a cent. Yeah. I love right. it, man. That's great. Great plan. And so, then rough numbers, you know, I'll be able to build it for around two hundred grand. Yep. And I'll be able to rent it for probably two grand. Wow. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 How do you not cash flow that? Yeah. Just right. simple numbers. That's a, that's a, that's brainless to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like, Kev, I just need construction two, money. It's like two hundred dollars a month and more for for that, right? And yeah. then you're, you're cash flowing eighteen hundred bucks a month, right? So. Yeah. 
Well, there's some utility costs, but yeah. still, I'm going to cash flow. Amazing. Full. I'm going to add another thousand bucks to cash flow a month. Crazy. Right? Yeah. I mean, kind of dumb not more, to do it. More, yeah, absolutely. Right? And then again, I'm creating housing. Yeah. Right? So we're not the bad guy that people, right. people are talking about bad landlords. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're creating stuff. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're pretty much giving away all your secrets. Every single person <laughs> in South Ontario is going to start buying houses on, on, on laneways. It's fine <laughs> because it means. It's the greater good. Correct, 100%. Because always, always, absolutely. Everything's always but the greater good. Right. Um, you know, people ask me, like, what, why do you do what you do? Because right. I, I, we, can, we can stop. Right. Right? Yeah. I can stop. Yeah. We can just live with what we got. I can yeah. just stock hack. I can just yeah. live off my properties. Right. Right? But that's not for the greater good. No. And, like, you're not, like, you, you're also not content. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Bored. Like, yeah. Bored. <laughs> right. right? So, no, it's... uh. It's interesting, and I I love that industry. Like just talking to you know, guys like our, our good friends Charles and uh, and Andy and Steve and stuff like that, and like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Joe Costanza. That. Joe, yeah. yeah. So like just like, um, for me, it's just I think it's just a nice little, um, you know, I mean, pocket that more and more people are being kind of um, made aware of, and I think it's going to be huge for the next five ten years. Yeah. Because what else are you gonna do? <laughs> Yeah, no. And eventually, and then, and then after Garden Suites, what's next? Yeah, right, right. What's the next thing? Yeah. Which I really don't have an answer. Five story res. <laughs> yeah. yeah, top ups. Top That'd ups. be crazy. Top expensive. ups are very expensive, right. and like structure. Oh, that's a whole different volume. Right. Massive disruption to the tenants. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Versus Garden Suites. Yeah. Nothing compared to that. That's true. Yeah. And then for the lessons benefit, te- top up would be a second, st- second or third story to Correct. a house as an addition. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then you, you, and then you have, and then you're dealing with structural uh, yeah. concerns. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's a lot. At a minimum, you're building a brand new roof. Yes. That ain't cheap. No. Brand, no. not just shingles. Yeah, I know. I know. It's a whole new roof structure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I want to talk about Vietnam. <laughs> oh man, the motherland. Because yeah. you shared the story with me when it, uh, I think it started raining on us when we were golfing. Yeah. So yeah. we had nothing better to do but talk to each other. Yeah. Yeah, imagine that, eh? Oh, yuck. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think we sat on, on, under that canopy for like an hour. It wasn't that long. Yeah. It was, yeah, but the time went by fast. Yeah. Uh, no, it's quite a bit. So, yeah. Uh, so, actually, before we, before we get into it, there's something, I, there's something that I always want Canadians to understand is right. how good they have it. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, mm. and, and people say I'm depressed. Like there's, there's reasons for being depressed. Yes. Um, but let's start. If, if, if everyone could at least start with gratitude, mm-hmm. like be grateful for what they have. Mm-hmm. And, but again, not everyone understands why they should be so grateful. But when I hear stories like your family's, it's pretty, it makes a lot of sense why you're so grateful. <laughs> so oh, please yeah. share. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and, and how like, did your family get here? <laughs> and like, Erin, you're right, man. And like, you know, definitely took me a long time, uh, decades really to, to, to realize how lucky I am to be born here in yeah. Canada. You're lucky to be alive. Right. You almost yeah. didn't exist. Yeah. 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 A very high, high rate of not being in existence. Yeah. Right. And yeah, my, so my, my, uh, my whole family's from Vietnam and uh and yeah like my my dad came over during the vietnam war mm-hmm. right and um and he was studying to be a doctor back home mm-hmm. right and uh and yeah and he couldn't continue and, sorry that's just to clarify yeah. the war was with the americans correct right yeah yeah, yeah so, they, so they, they, vietnam invited the americans to come so he had to get out of there <laughs> yeah, like, he, had to get out of he would have died <laughs> right yeah. right down so yeah like, would he have been would he been like would he have been like scripted he was to of fight? Age. He was of age, so he had to get out of there or scripted to fight. Right? Conservative fight against Americans. Correct. Right. Great. Right. Yeah. Great. So so he had to get out of there. So pretty much got smuggled out of there. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and then how did that happen? Well, how, mm-hmm. how do you how do you pay to get how do you how do you pay to get smuggled out? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so it's just uh, backtracking a little bit. Is uh, my grandpa had to sell his bakery mm-hmm. that he owned, right? So mm-hmm. he sold he sold his bakery that he owned. Um, so he sold his pay- livelihood. He sold his, his whole life. Sold the family business. Yes. Yeah. 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 So and, and paid off the local officers to uh, to put my dad and his two brothers um, into a boat into the middle of nowhere with like a chance of uh, like the chance of death was was very high, right? Enemy ships, natural disasters, mm-hmm. starvation, Pirates. dehydration. Yeah. It could be anything, right? Yeah. So like uh, luck enough, he survived all that. Through uh, a series of uh, of good breaks, and uh, and ended up in uh, Cambodian refugee camp, right. and eventually made it over here, right? And like imagine that though, like you're starting to be a doctor, like, like you mean like you you're about to make your family so proud, you come over here, and what do you do? Like 
He's like, I can't continue my education here. You know what I mean? Like, I have to make money, send it back home. Mm -hmm. They have nothing. Mm -hmm. He just sold everything. Right? So, and so to this day, like, it's not regret, but he's like, I could have been a doctor, but, but if, if we had to do it all over again, he'll still do the same thing. Right? But he did whatever it took to try to give me and my sister the best life that we can have. Right? And like, that's all I'm trying to do for my family. You know what I mean? I, I, I have a two year old daughter at home and one, one more coming and all I want is uh, for them to have ample opportunity to, to be successful mm -hmm. right I want them to be humble uh, I want them to appreciate the dollar the value of a dollar I think like working from a young age um, teach people that teach kids that you want something work for it right mm -hmm. um, but you know what I mean like growing up everyone like I you know what I mean like I did not play any organized sports right until until it was free through the school system, you know I mean like try skating with your uh, your 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 hockey buddies that have been playing their whole lives and learn mm -hmm. how to skate when you're like in, in your twenties, man. Like they're skating circles around me, right? So, and, but but like it, it, like I didn't have any opportunity to do any of that, right? And I want to give uh, my daughters like all the opportunities in the world. It, if they want to fly to the moon, like, mm -hmm. go for it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so I, I think that's like, I I do have to constantly tell myself that you know what I mean like be grateful, right? You know what I mean like like sometimes I so sometimes you know you get frustrated, not angry, you get frustrated that things don't go your way, or you know what I mean like um like I I lose a deal or I didn't get a certain property or I'm I'm not feeling well, whatever it is, right? And every time I complain and I go talk to my dad, he looks at me, right? Doesn't even have to say anything. I'm just like, I'm oh, sorry, just don't worry about it. <laughs> He's like, what are you complaining about, right? So, so yeah, so uh, to me, like he, he keeps me so grounded, uh, so humble. Uh, my mom puts me in my place. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just a, a, an amazing di like dynamic kind of growing up. And then just the friends, the friends that um, I was so blessed to be surrounded by. You know what I mean? Because like I I know a lot of people uh, in my from my childhood that just didn't make it, just didn't make it uh, right, or, or or just stuck in like kind of like that East End kind of North culture. East. Yeah, right. So and like great people, amazing people. I have amazing friends, um, but like like my, my first thought was like, okay, like how do I grind? How do I work? How do I build to give my family? A better future right so i think it, i think it all starts with that and like so when when someone asks me like what's my why uh, that's why right so it's pretty deep bro sorry man <laughs> better apologize i think we talked about that i think we had the same conversation right yeah, yeah it was a lot, but that was, was, under, was a lot worse oh no that was that like, was the pg version yeah that was the g version you know what but uh right. but no like it's uh like like to like to me man like you have to be you have to be humble you have to be grateful but hungry, like, like there is, it's just, you know, life's too short, man. You know, like enjoy it. You know what I mean? Call your friends, call your family that you haven't talked to. You know what I mean? Especially through this global pandemic. Mm -hmm. There was so many people were harmed mm -hmm. and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so many lives and families hurt. Reach out to your loved ones. You know, like, like when was the last time you talked to, you know, your parents, your grandparents, your brother, your cousin, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So reach out. Are your grandparents still around? Uh, my mom's side uh, is, is in Vancouver yeah, yeah. and they're well, dealing with cars. like no no what they're dealing with all like the forest fires right now right well, so, it's better than being back in <laughs> oh yeah 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 you know what oh, sorry yeah <laughs> they're not Lucky. from Vietnam yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah. no 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 yeah uh, no 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 they're also from Vietnam so 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 my parents goal was to like sponsor them over right so like that like that was the first goal so like luckily both my grandparents um made it over here yeah, yeah. um so yeah so my my, my dad's side uh, you know, uh, passed away a while ago. But mom's side, my grandpa, and grandpa are still in uh, in uh, in BC there, and uh, and my sister's actually in Calgary. So she she went out there for school. If you if you if you ever been out to Calgary and seen the mountains, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's tough to come back. So she just never did, right? So yeah. um, she has a really good job out there. But uh, yeah, obviously I miss her. 
and um and I, and I want you know I mean she, she hasn't seen my daughter as much as she wants to because of the pandemic right so it's just like uh, like fa- like family is huge to me like friends and family is huge to me right mm-hmm. like I have like I have eight aunts and uncles on my mom's side and seven on, on, on my dad's side mm-hmm. so we have a big family mm-hmm. and so so family has always been important and like you know through my childhood there's been breakups internally with our families and like i don't want that right and and i feel like a lot of that was due to finances right so 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 if i can control the finance aspect which allows me to invest in my health and my family then i can create this very positive culture around me right so mm-hmm. yeah oh you, you your family's kind of set the example how important family is like ba- mm-hmm. your grandparents basically gave up everything everything for their kids everything like just Literally imagine that though, like, imagine you don't have any my dad the story of like having five bucks in your pocket i think he might not even have that much when he came over here i'll have to confirm and get back to you yeah, right. but imagine you have five dollars dropped into a country that you don't speak the language mm-hmm. and like go ahead Darren. make make something yourself mm-hmm. It's tough, right? Like it's it's really it's really really tough. Yeah. Like to me, so so to, to me, like I mean, like I I give them like um, all the kudos in the world. Like look up to them. Like like they're superheroes. Right? Just to be able to do that, right? Um, and yeah, like it's and, and like in like you know I, like I love Hamilton. I grew up in Hamilton, mm-hmm. right? Very blue collar town. Mm-hmm. So being like Asian in a very blue collar you know Caucasian dominant city wasn't wasn't easy. Wasn't easy, right? So. Uh, so yeah, I, like thick skin, man. <laughs> They're tough as nails, right? Those uh, th- those parents for sure. Growing up where you had to, like, yeah, have to be. <laughs> oh, where to go from here? <laughs> <laughs> well, she got on that, uh, <laughs> that little notebook of yours. <laughs> uh, we were talking before recording because I asked you. Um, hope you don't mind me asking. But we have some mutual friends who are sending their kids to private schools, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Like. Um, I know you're a humble guy, but you've done well for yourself. Thank you. You have the choice to be able to send your kids to uh, private school or not. Yeah. And then we were, we were before we were recording, we were, at, we were talking. So I'll, I'll share just quickly some context. I've had people, I've asked the question myself. I've, 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 I've seen family friends who put their kids through private school. And then uh, I asked their opinion about it as well, because I'm a parent too. I'm just curious. Uh, and often when I ask about the benefits of being in private school, they often will tell me the biggest benefit is the networking, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And then my thought was, well, I could spend that money and join a private golf club, <laughs> and I'd be, and I, I have, I can, I can network, and I can pretty much guarantee an ROI on that. <laughs> so I was asking you, because you do have a nice golf membership, mm-hmm. right? Like, what are your thoughts? Because I asked you, so I start with the question. Yeah. Are you considering private school for your kids? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, and like, um, you know, we're very blessed to have the opportunity to even consider that, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, yeah, my wife and I have talked about it. And, um, and, and and we are, you know, I mean, like, I think if we do send our kids to private school, it will be later on in life, um, if we do it at all. Um, there's nothing wrong with, like, the public or Catholic system at all, right, mm-hmm. in, in, um, in, in Hamilton. To me, like, if I do, it wouldn't be for networking, but opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hate it or love it. Like, um, you know, children in private schools do get better opportunities, right? So, um, like, you I mean, like, am I buying opportunity for, for my children? Like, you kind of, in a sense, you are, mm-hmm. right? So, um, like, it goes back to the point of, like, I don't want them to not ha- not appreciate the value of the dollar, mm-hmm. right? So, I think that they, they work for everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and I think, like... You know what I mean like I, I have really good friends, public Catholic private school like yeah. you know what I mean and I know people on boards to uh, of private school and stuff like that right so so to to me like if you can afford it and 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 you use it as opportunity for your children then do it mm-hmm. but networking yeah I mean like car clubs or or like golf clubs I like. I'm also like selfish. Like I, I enjoy golfing, <laughs> right? So, so, so being a part of a golf club where I can do something that I really, really enjoy, mm-hmm. and and like probably the, my, my two of my favorite things is is golfing and meeting new people. So if you can do both those things, mm-hmm. right? Networking wise, like that's phenomenal, right? Mm-hmm. But like, you know, I also know people who are part of clubs but only 
golf with that same foursome the whole time, yeah. right? So, so if you're willing to put yourself out there. I mean, there's there's ample uh, opportunities to uh, to network, but uh, but yeah, like you know what I mean. Like I wouldn't say private school for networking. I'd definitely go like uh, you know what I mean, like like a club or a networking event or mm-hmm. anything. It could be anything. A, mm-hmm. a mom dad group. It could be a CrossFit gym. It could be you know what I mean, a spin spin cycle class, right, whatever right, right. it is, right? So, right. but I think like if you want to network. You know what I mean? Like you just got to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. And like I was, in, uh, I was a pretty big introvert growing up. I was, I was, I was shy. I was, Shut up, I was, you. I was a shy boy. I've never met this person. Yeah, I was a shy boy. Like, like you can ask a bunch of my childhood buddies, and like, like some of my good friends I've known for 25, 30 years, right? So they've been with me through this whole, whole the through my whole life, pretty much. And I was a shy guy. I, I was a shy guy. I was a nerd. Um, I wanted to be like a computer programmer at one point. I kind of made a cool game in uh, in high school and stuff like that. I was a pretty big gamer growing up. And then until I got into sales, where I'm like, well, like I just got to put myself out there. Yeah, you can't be shy. In you sales. can't be shy. Like it, it's it's like it's tough to to try and teach somebody people skills and sales skills. It's, it, it's a very tough skill to, to kind of, to, to kind of teach and learn. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to be fully committed to it and not care what people think and say right so uh so yeah just like i mean it was tough for me it was really really tough for me um i still have a bit of a stutter uh, but i stuttered pretty bad growing up right um and and um i tend to talk very fast Mm -hmm. so so my cues are talk very slow right so Mm -hmm. i've been trying to improve on that Um, self-improvement is a huge thing for me Um, like in my mind right now I sound like this when I'm talking, <laughs> right? But it comes out normal, mm-hmm. right? But when I speed up, like, hey, thanks for having me. Like, it's so good to be here. I start stumbling. I start over my words, right? And too uh, fast. It's too fast. It's too fast. But yeah. to me, it's just trying to, like, just get that information out. Yeah. Um, so I've been working on that a lot. And, and, and it's growing. And I, I'm, I'm working with uh, uh, Neil there from the Thorn Group. Amazing, amazing gentleman on, on public speaking, on how to read a room. And like uh, I brought him in to kind of teach my whole team too. And I think these are just like, you know, personal development um, courses and things that, that you can do that will just better your life. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like I can teach you how to be a good broker and run a business whatever it is but like how can i teach you to be a better person i mean like, i think that's I and that's very important to me mm-hmm. cool cool so i asked about the networking um the opportunities that you have yeah, yeah. because on the show we've covered lots of them for example my friends christy brady yes. they love boating yeah cool. right so they network at their boat club oh amazing right amazing yeah. my friend ryan's at, yeah. at, a, at a car club right because he, lo- he loves his car yeah he, like he likes exotic cars mm-hmm. Right, you like golf. Yeah. Um, now there are. So I mentioned it because a lot of people on this on this show are looking to raise uh, either private funds to borrow cool. or for partnerships. Yeah. So Amazing. they're looking to meet people with Amazing. with money. Amazing. You know, you join a private golf club. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good filter. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money there for sure. Because uh, I, I I believe the annual what you have, what your your can annual outlay is. Over ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah, right. To belong to a club, right? So that's a pretty good filter. Those people are likely successful. But there's a the right way to do it, to network. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Uh, is there some advice you can give on how the the right way to network? Yeah, you, I'll just talk. I'll just touch on the wrong part. Yeah, yeah. Talk, Going for the sale right off the right, right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we've all been in part of networking groups where yeah. they come once, handle business cards, and yeah. you never see them again, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But to to me, man, like. I genuinely love meeting new people. Mm-hmm. And, and like to step it one step further, if you genuinely like to meet new people and care, really care what they do and what their business is and how you can support it, mm-hmm. that's like, I think that's like the pinnacle of networking. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I always ask the questions like, how can I help? Mm-hmm. You know, Erwin, like, like you're, you're trying to grow this portfolio, you're trying yeah. to do a lane warehouse. You got me mortgages. How can I help? That helped. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, like, like you want to put your kids through private school. I don't know. How can I help? You know what I mean. So, so it it, it, it it's it's like the I think by answering that question and genuinely care, like you know I mean like a, a, a lot of people I met through all these networking events, through the gym, through the golf club, you know what I mean, through like all these networking events, like they don't know I do mortgages, and I'm perfectly fine with it, mm-hmm. right? I don't start off with hey I, um, I'm a mortgage broker, I want your business, call me for pre-approval, whatever. Like I don't start with that yeah. if they ask. 
um, I tell them it might not be the best way to network, right? But um, but to me, like to me, like I I I feel like if you build long term lifetime relationships, mm-hmm. that it will come around right. and it will support you afterwards, right? right? So there, there there's been a couple of moments where I'll bump into a good friend and it's like, hey man, are you still selling houses? And I'm like, oh Cause man. You're Mr. Hamilton. I'm like, <laughs> dang it, like you know what I mean, like. Uh, no, I've never sold houses, but you want me to, I can put you in touch with somebody. I do mortgages. Oh, did you switch careers? Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. It's always a mortgage broker, yeah. right? But, but let me like, that's a, like, that's kind of like the other side of it. But, um, but yeah, like to me, just be genuine, be yourself yeah. and like, don't do it for the leads and the money, right? Do it because you care about it. If you're part of a car club, because you can mm-hmm. care. Lewis on my team, like he like loves fishing. You know what I mean? The mortgage angler. I, I love it. I love it, right? He loves fishing. He takes his clients and referrals horse out on his boat. They go oh, fishing. Cool. The boat. What are you talk about? You know what I mean? Like, you're out there, right? So, you mean like uh, Aaron and Jordan, my team, they love sports, right? So, uh, uh, Jordan plays high level softball. So, like, I just, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, just stuff like that. Like, join things that you have a passion for mm-hmm. cooking class, baking class, mm-hmm. yoga dancing whatever it is like join it and just get to know people mm-hmm. you know put yourself out there right so right. and like and and, and and you when you join that you're you already have mutual interests right so it's easy mm-hmm. you know what i mean so so it's already an icebreaker mm-hmm. so now just you know go from there you know what i mean like to me if if, if if you can talk if you can talk about sports food travel and real estate mm-hmm. you can always find a conversation mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. right so and I think if, for any shy real estate investors out there, yeah, they, I think they have to understand that everyone wants to talk about real estate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, and not just like you and I, but a whole bunch of people are not in real estate yeah. and, and as in like an active investor. Mm-hmm. Like I, for example, I belong to EO, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Entrepreneurs Organization, and people want to talk to me all the time about real estate because yeah. most of them don't do, don't have multiple properties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think the investor, like the listener, if you're looking to do that, trying to raise capital for, for, to borrow or for partnership, like people want to talk about this because it's a hot subject. And, and EO is phenomenal. Groups like EO and, and like, uh, I think it's tech is another one out yeah. there. And Hamilton like, Golf and Country Club. Yeah. So, so <laughs> we, when we join those groups, right, it's, um, what I love about those groups is that I remember I went to an education session with EO. Right, and I learned more in that one day than I ever learned in school. It was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. real life, street knowledge, right? Yeah, I mean, people speaking you know from mean? experience. Like, like I, I'm very book smart coming out of school, right? So just hardcore street knowledge, and like, and and when you talk to people, like if you can align yourself with someone who is a very shy mm-hmm. person that wants to invest, that's almost an ideal JV partner, mm-hmm. right? Show them the numbers. Let you know I me mean? show them numbers. Show them how you're gonna do it. Hey, let's do one together. If you don't like my process or you don't like your return or whatever it is, then that's it. But usually those are like, you know, some of the best JV partners are mm-hmm. those angel investors with capital, with borrowing power, right? That that, that can fund a lot of your projects, right? So yeah, like it just like it, it's not like people don't want to invest in real estate. It's uh, it's they don't know how or or, or they're a little scared to right. because they don't know how. Right. Right. So so use the knowledge that you've learned through your conversations, through iWin and stuff like that, and just educate them, right, mm-hmm. so. Uh, I think I, I think people under, need to understand that most people's default answer to anything they don't understand is it's risky. Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah, How absolutely. about, uh, Kevin, you should buy some Apple stock, yeah. right? That's risky. Yeah, you don't, I mean, uh, Adam, you, oh, uh, Kevin, my, you should oh, buy some. Oh, my parents lost all their money in yeah. uh, 2008, so it's yeah. risky. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Kevin, you should buy some uh, Microsoft stock, it's, yeah. it's risky. Because yeah. they don't even know what it is, right? right. right? And, and so, you, Folks need to dig past that, right? Right. Uh, it's this, it's it's as, it's as few words as possible for people to, to really say what they really mean is, I don't have enough information to make a proper decision. Hundred percent, I agree. Yeah. So if you want, so that's where the long term comes in, right? And in, in, in a long term relationship, someone will get to know that you know what you're doing, right? Absolutely. And then they'll ask more questions. They'll believe. They'll ask you, more, and then they'll they'll believe what you're telling them, right. and they'll believe your numbers. Right. 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 And then you'll play the long game. Yeah. And then hopefully, they, if nothing else, yeah. they will go do it for themselves. Right. 
and you've made the world a better place in my opinion i agree and and like i, I think some of the best ways to network too is giving back to the community i, I think that's huge man mm-hmm. like uh uh, one of our branches is, is Empire Cares, and, it's, uh, and, and that's our initiative to get back to the Cuban community, mm-hmm. trying to end youth hunger, trying to put a shelter over every kid's head, mm-hmm. uh, a sweater on every shirt's back, every, every kid's back kind of deal. And I and I know the stuff that you're doing with the, having the basket brigade there. Uh, we're definitely going to be working together. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to reach out to James and, and yourself there. Uh, to do some really, really amazing collaborations for yeah. sure. I know you've been chasing us for a bit. <laughs> but, but but the thing to me is that like like I think that is like you know that you guys everyone comes together for a common cause there, and it's like you, we don't have to do that. No, don't have to. You know what I mean? Like, money and it doesn't make us any money. No. You no, know, right? Costs cost money. money. <laughs> costs us a lot of money. But it, but but I think it's so important um, as leaders of our community to to take those initiatives and mm-hmm. get other people involved. Mm-hmm. Right, because uh, because I mean, like, I mean, like, uh, especially over the past couple of years uh, with the global pandemic, it's uh, like I mean, like these uh, you know these organizations, these charities within these communities uh, need our help more so now than ever. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. We emphasize that point. It costs us money. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I have to give people a day off here at work mm-hmm. so that we can yeah. go work on the charity. Yeah, absolutely. Right? For anyone listening, like think what a day off means to yeah. you. Yeah. Like what what kind of dollar value would you put yeah. on it? Yeah. That's basically what I'm having to come out for right. for this charity. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's why I, I appreciate the volunteers so much. Yeah. Like you know I mean the volunteer your time out of your busy day because yeah. everyone's busy, right? Everyone's you know? busy. So 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 volunteers is uh, it makes it makes these initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, run well mm-hmm. and, and, and become successful, mm-hmm. right? So, and then the show is called "The Truth About Real Estate Investing." So I'll just share the truth. Yeah, our problem is often capital, right. not volunteers. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it is. We've been really lucky. Yeah. We we've always had a plethora of, of volunteers. Amazing. Uh, we will run, we'll run out of capital way before we run out of volunteers. Right, right, right. Right. So hence our focus in our businesses has been to make money to fund the charity because yeah. uh, in my experience it's easier to grow our business and make more money mm-hmm. than it is to fundraise right 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 i imagine you you fundraise too yeah you know what like uh, we uh yeah we don't take any profits all of all of our fundraising initiatives goes directly to yeah. charities right so uh, but you're right yeah you know what i mean like we we take the time and, and effort to run these events we want to make sure it's also successful and and we're willing to do whatever it takes to make it successful. You know what I mean? Our Putt for Purpose event, our Toys for Tots uh, toy drive, which mm-hmm. is going to be a collaboration with uh, Hamilton Basket Brigade here. It's going to be uh, like I feel like these these initiatives. Um, you know what I mean? Like we we put our like anything in life, we we, we put our 110 percent into because we want to continue to grow and be bigger and bigger every single year, right? Because if it's not effective, and it's not big, and if it's not successful, mm-hmm. why are we doing it? Yeah. Just go back to, you know, just, just go back to doing real estate, just, just not worry about it, right? So so to me, like, I think someone has to do it, right? And Because yeah. um, and, and no one else is gonna do it. Yeah, and the more of them out there, the better. Right. And, uh, and yeah, and that's why, I, like I said, I, I appreciate so many of our volunteers, so many of our sponsors, you know what I mean? All the companies, all our clients, are. The colleagues that we work with that come down to, 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 to sponsor and donate and, and volunteer. I like, I mean, like, I mean, community, man. Community is so strong mm-hmm. and, and so powerful. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you build a strong community, it becomes, yeah, 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 like it becomes contagious. Like you want to be a part of it, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, like, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting excited. Yeah, of I'm course. getting excited to be able to do one in person again. Yeah, for of Thanksgiving. Course. Yeah. Right. We'll be able to yeah. come together. Amazing. It'd be crazy. Thanksgiving, man. Be thankful. Be thankful for what you have. You don't need Thanksgiving to be thankful. It, I know you're right, but right. you know what I mean. It's it's funny because when I <laughs> since I started golfing with people, it's actually Andrew Hines said to me, after I you know I dropped like five f bombs in a row. Mm-hmm. Just, I've never heard you swear so much. Because uh-huh. a lot of people know me from the show. <laughs> I don't, right. I've, I don't think right. I've ever dropped an f bomb in the show. No, no. And then you're telling me to try to get through a round without swearing. <laughs> It's such a love-hate sport, right? <laughs> but uh, a good friend of mine, uh, we're golfing. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. We're golfing, and he is like, you know, you know, Chris, right? Yeah, yeah. Chris Conroy, Conroy Golf. He's uh, a, a good friend, 
and um, and a very a very good golfer. Very good golfer. Scratch. He, yeah. I think better than scratch. I think right. So, He's good. Yeah. So so we're golfing and I, like I mean, for, like for the amount of golf I play, I'm not very good, but I like duff one and I got really mad. And then he goes to me, he's like, Kevin, why are you mad? I'm like, oh, I hit a I hit a terrible shot. He's like, you're not good enough to be mad. And I'm like, pardon? <laughs> like, I'm angry. I'm furious. I'm like, pardon? He's like, Kevin. What makes you think you can hit it flush down the middle every single time? <laughs> right? He's like, you're not good enough to be mad. If you hit flush down the middle every single time, then you would not be a mortgage broker. You'd be on tour. Yeah, You'd yeah, be yeah. winning the Masters. Yeah, yeah, but but true. Kevin, you just have to mitigate your misses and enjoy the sport. And it, and just enjoy the game because it is a love-hate, And but you just enjoy the game. And that comment that statement still resonates with me yeah. every time i become a little frustrated with the game yeah, yeah. i'm like yeah it's, it's, he's right like you know what i mean like yeah. him being like you know what i mean like a club pro still doesn't hit it flush no every time professionals don't hit the fair every time yeah professionals these guys put in 50 60 70, 80 hours a week yeah. in this game yeah. and they they don't hit the fair every time they hit 100 to 300 balls a day what makes you think you can hit it flush every single time i'm just like all right man yeah fair enough interesting point. very interesting yeah you know, i'll just add one last point to that because a, a few mutual friend of ours i want to name names but like he's like he's a like, he's a guy that shoots 130 usually and he's like cussing and swearing when he misses a shot yeah. and like you don't play golf what is your expectation coming in yeah right <laughs> what did you think would happen mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like anything in life it, it like the more time you put into it the more preparation yeah. you put into it um, that's where the results come it all starts with preparation doing a flip it all starts with the math the homework yeah. aligning the contractors being re realistic with timeline where's your capital coming from yeah. right so it's just like once you do all that preparation all that homework yeah, yeah. put an offer in the property is easy yeah. right so 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 it, it, like anything in life it, it all starts with preparation yeah. um, uh, you know like like Usain Bolt, for example, runs, you know, like a, a sub 10 minute, 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. meters. Yeah. He's, he's, out, he's out on the main stage for less than 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. But how much preparation mm -hmm. has he done behind the scenes, right? So, I'll just, incredible. I'll just, I'll just tweak that point that I almost know nothing about how the mortgage world works. Yeah. I have some ideas, mm -hmm. but then it's different between every single lender. For sure. Absolutely. Versus I just give you the deal. <laughs> Kevin, make it happen. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Go yeah, broker this. Yeah, like we're working with you know 62 different banks and lenders and growing. Right. Uh, we'd love to get to about you know 85, 90 next year. Just and like, do we use all of them on a regular basis? Absolutely not, right? But but what we want is to have an option mm -hmm. for whatever your scenario is, mm -hmm. right? So 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 then when you come to us, it's it's not just a flat no, like you know the banking institution. You go in there, you're yeah, you they have one product, and you don't fit in that one product. Mm -hmm. It's just a straight up no, mm -hmm. right? For us, it's like you know what? No, it's okay. What options do you have? Mm -hmm. If you can't buy today, how can we come up with a game plan so you can right. buy six months, twelve months from now, right? right? Or buy another in six or twelve months, right. right? So it's just ability to give all of our clients and friends and family options mm -hmm. is uh, is what we thrive to do, right? And then as to add to that, because for example, the last two mortgages, well, I still have to close on one, but the last mortgage I got was a was a uh, B lender, correct. Yeah. Right? Are people do they get mad if they have to go B lender? Yeah. Well, like it, it, <laughs> if they think they're an, if, if they think they're an A client, right? Uh, so for listeners, you know, like like the lending pots are A lending is your major banks or traditional lenders, yeah. right? A B lending is alternative financing, um, which the lenders deem a bit higher risk, yeah. and then C lending is private lending, right? Yeah. So I love the B lending space. Right, you can get unlimited properties in the B lending space if you want. Sounds to, good, doesn't it? Right? Unlimited properties. Unlimited. So, so, but, but, but you have to set the expectation or realize that you like realize where you qualify. You know what I mean? If you're at 12 properties, um, don't claim much income. Credit is iffy because you've been shopping it around, and you're like, I'm an A, I'm an A client. Okay, well, yeah. well, like let's let's revisit that thought, <laughs> right? You're not, but you know, I mean, these are your <laughs> options, right? And, and then if you want to proceed, we'll develop and implement a plan for you. Mm -hmm. And if not, then, you, then you're not the right client for us, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, we work hard, 
but you know our time is also valuable and so is your time yeah. so if we're going to work together let's make sure it's worth it yeah. right? and this is reality yeah right? I, I pay i pay double triple what someone would for an a mortgage because sure. i'm on b yeah because it's my that's not my situation you're gonna make way more, more you're gonna make that and more down yeah. the road right so yeah. Yeah. that's not the point i'm making is that people get they, they, run, they think it's a wall yeah, yeah oh my god i can't get an a mortgage anymore yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. over. It's over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like Kevin, just don't burn my file. I'm done as an investor. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> Versus like, yeah. I can have more mortgages. Yeah. I'm living <laughs> properties. I'm living properties. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, again, yeah, that's so. for my own personal, that's my, right. for my situation. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. situation is different, right. but I can keep buying more properties, Kevin. Of course, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's not the end of the Let, world, is it? Let's close on this one first, eh, Aaron? So. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably have to hold on to this episode then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so sure. no one knows how many properties we have. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for doing this. I know you're short on time. I know you got to run. Thankfully, your phone didn't did, ring. Did it ring? No, I we're good. It, we're I don't good. think okay. it moved. But uh, uh, any final words you want to share with the listener? Other, than, other I mean, first off, where, where can people find you? Yeah, you know what, uh, Kevin at EmpireMortgageGroup.ca. Oh, we're doing email addresses. You sure? sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The personal email just for you. Oh, gee. Um, okay. And uh, and 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 I, want, I just want to say thank you, and uh, thank you for what you're doing with the iWin community, uh, the Stock Hacker Academy, How the Basket Brigade. Um, you guys are doing big things. Um, having having just like it's an honor to be on your show. You know what I mean? The top uh, real estate investing podcast in Canada. I think you're still top. Right? You're still up there. We've sure. had some nice right? accolades. So, but uh, but no, I I, I think um, you know what I mean. Like if you're listening, then you're you're growing right now, and and, and hopefully that I can give you. Uh, one or two tidbits uh, throughout this whole podcast that that can make you a better person, mm-hmm. right? So, um, so, so, so my 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 thing, my thought is just keep learning, just yeah. just keep being better, never settle. Um, if you're not growing, you're dying, mm-hmm. right? So, uh, so yeah, so just keep just keep talking to people who um, have nicer cars and bigger houses than you. And, and, like yourself, and, and like learn <laughs> nice from them, Tesla, right? By the way. <laughs> and and like learn from them, right? And it's just like not not everything they do um, works for you, okay. but 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 take take the things that do, yeah. So, do you have time for two more questions? Sure, I can one, remember one, one of them. One more question. One more question. One more question. All right. How, how's the stock hacking going? Stock hacking's going well, man. You know, like um, not fully committed yet. Uh, like I love the idea. It took me a long time paper trading to get comfortable doing it. Um, I think if you understand the risk with it, then you can be very successful at it, mm-hmm. right? I, I think uh, a lot of people premium chase, uh, mm. and then if you premium chase, trying to make, uh, trying to hit home runs, yeah. and trying to make the quick buck, then you're not going to do very well. It's like, dangerous. That's it's, risky. Well, the thing is, like, if you look, even you look at that, call it twelve percent per year. It, it, you're like, oh, private mortgage, twelve percent per year. That's pretty good. But like, okay, well, stock hacking. If you make one percent a month, it's like very easy. And, but like a lot of people are not satisfied with that, right? Right. So 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 then like if you if you look at macroly, um, I can make one percent stock hacking for sure. Maybe within two days, one day, three hours even, right? But like to me, it's just like just be careful, learn, read, yeah. talk to people yeah, yeah. that are that have been doing it. Yeah. Um, know your risk, right? Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And like I said, like it's I I think it it's it's it, it, it it is a revenue stream that I will always use yeah. because it's easy. You can do it anywhere. You can do it from your phone. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. But but I think that um, people need to learn uh, what the risks are. Yeah, yeah. And then and then just be patient. Go slow. Right. Yeah. So absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, right. man. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you as always, Erwin. It was a pleasure. Thanks.